My friends, hello and welcome to the goddamn weekend of the year. We got Doctor Who today, we got Game of Thrones tomorrow. If that ain't some primetime television descended from the heavens above to please our goodly eyes down here on Earth, I don't know what is. I just really don't, because that's a combo. That's a combo to break all other combos that ever existed in history. I'm impressed, I'm happy, I'm excited, but I can't bring you something of that quality or caliber today. I, it's gonna have to be Pokemon, because that's what I, I got the budget for, unfortunately. Didn't quite have the hundreds of millions of dollars required to, to make Game of Thrones, or, or however many quid they, uh, they pop along to the shop with to build Doctor Who. Uh, we got Pokemon, so that's what we got. So I'm gonna lead off with a Bronzong against Rhyperior. This guy, his uh, name was Mushroom, I think, and I uh, played him on my stream the other day, and you know, it was pretty fun. So we're going to see how this does. This Zong Dong, this Zong Long Dong Ding Frong, uh, in a frock, Frong, uh, Zong Long, his entire name is confusing me right now because I cannot say Bronzong for the, my goddamn life, although from right there I did. It's going to do some work, like, in the early game. So first of all, I'm going to Trisk off him into Stealth Rock. Then I'm going to get off my Stealth Rock my own stealth rock as he goes into a chandelier and then he actually turns out not to be a chandelier because if you're a very clever person you'll look at his HP and you'll see it's 261 which apparently is the HP number which Zorak possesses most of the time not sure if chandelier is similar or not but know that it is his Zorak and also you'll probably notice the flamethrower didn't really do that much damage just because I'm running a heat proof bronzong heat proof bronzong it's pretty damn cool um, and it actually worked out really nicely in the situation because I managed to toxic the Zorak and uh, hey, that's always great when you get some kind of residual damage going on, eh? I'm a fan of that. In, in the theme of Game of Thrones, fucking Daenerys Targaryen comes out to the field and I obviously resist the Flamethrower four times, it's probably locked into it, so I'm going to go for the Rain Dance as he switches to Roserade, which unfortunately is a rebel, is a saint, is the salt of the earth, and she's dangerous, apart from this male Roserade, which somewhat confuses me when you see male Roserade. It's uh, it's an interesting thing, but regardless, I'm going to have to switch out because I can't kill it with a Draco, especially seeing that, you know, it's running lefties and gig drain, whatever. Black Sludge, actually, it has, but um, it is defensive. It's a bulky Roserade. You can tell from the HP number. I couldn't at the time, but now I was setting up spikes, and the reason I went into Bronzong because I was thinking, well, maybe he's going to sleep powder me because if he sleep powders me, then just incapacitated, I'm going to go on to something else. kind of want to use Bronzong as sleep fodder here, but turns out that Gyrable does sod all, and he doesn't sleep powder me. In fact, tries to go for the spikes to try and set up all his hazards. I'm like, oh god, I cannot stay in here. Bronzong is complete setup fodder, so I'm going to go into my, uh, my, my, my Tornadus, my Tornadus, who is unfortunately only going to get one turn of rain behind him, because uh, I don't have a damp rock with, with Danny. She only has the uh, the life orb or the left I think life orb so uh, yeah bring in bring in big old Walter White gonna go for that uh, hurricane and uh, smash the Rhyperia actually huge amount of damage uh, on a resisted hit of course Rhyperia special defense nothing to uh, kind of bet on if I were a betting man and Rhyperia special defense were betting fair I would not go there certainly not because it's it's not a good place to, to place your money um, money is always in the banana stand that's where the money is. God, fucking TV references everywhere today. What's going on? This this battle is sponsored by uh, NBC, BBC. Dot co dot you com day. Um, now going to Bronzong, he goes for the Mega Horn, which looks fucking cool, but. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have glasses, so he misses the second one. And Gyroball is actually going to smash Rhyperia pretty damn hard. Uh, doesn't do enough to kill it, but hey, I can do another one. Maybe if he hits himself with confusion, which, spoilers, he does that right now. Um, then I can kill him with another one. And, uh, you know, he also had a chance to miss Megahorn. So the odds were slightly in my favor, you could say. And we're going to come out of the situation pretty nicely with Bronzong actually staying alive. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, zonging along, zonging along, ah, 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 zonging along, and it's a heat rumor, it's gonna give you a turn and kill me, yeah, doodly doo doo do 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 I don't know, I just break out into song a lot of the time, it's usually when Nick's around, we just break into song, and then that's just, that's like half the video, but, uh, I, don't know, I, I guess I need a bit more of uh, external factors before I break into song. Anyway, uh, I actually find out a lot of nice information there and also benefit greatly from the Darmanitan because it comes in, takes Stealth Rock, and then goes for the U-turn and shows me its life orb. So lots of information, kind of, not really, just helps me 
Uh, he would have been better to go into Rose Rain instead of Spikes, but he didn't. Regardless, I bring in fucking Haley, who's gonna just relic song and get the sleep. I was actually uh, singing a lullaby to the Kingdra during the stream, and pro tip, if you sing a lullaby while you use relic song, you will get a sleep 100% of the time, so I recommend you do it. Uh, I then decide I'm gonna go for the Zen Headbutt to try and finish it off after I've transformed into my beautiful form, and, um... Hey, this isn't the Chandelure, it's the fucking Zorak, so I'm going to take the chance to close combat a Chandelure, even though it isn't really one. It's just kind of cool to see that, uh, that I actually kind of hit Chandelure with close combat. Uh, I guess there are a few opportunities to do that, Scrappy being one of them, and I guess Foresight being another, but uh, hey... Not an opportunity uh, usually given, so I decided to make the most of it. Now, brings in Chandler, and I don't really want to miss Stone Edge. Uh, and I'm thinking Zen Head by Stab, but apart from spoilers, it's not even spoilers. Um, yeah, Meloetta isn't part psychic when it turns into this form it's fighting normal so that's why it has Zen headbutt because I'm stupid and I thought that it's part psychic and it's stab but apparently it's not part psychic and hey I'm the one laughing the other side of my face however my opponent thinks I'm psychic which is why he goes for the shadow ball because I guess we both are wrong and we don't really come across Meloetta slash don't use it that often. Um, I end up missing a Zen Headbutt somewhere in there. You probably caught that, and that is a whole bunch of bullshit, but I'm like, fuck it, I'm going for Stone Edge instead, because if Zen Headbutt doesn't hit, then maybe the Stone Edge gods will be in my favor, you know what I'm saying? And so they are, and then I kill it, but then I die to my own burns. It's, you know, it's kind of a, a miffed situation. It comes out okay in the end, but whatever. Decided to go into my Victini, and uh, looking at the hazard damage, I take Stealth Rock Spikes before Rose Raid does, indicating that I'm faster. I already kind of knew that, though, from the fact that he has Black Sludge, and he's um, he's more defensively built with Spikes and all that good stuff, so I decide I, uh, I'm going to fire off a V-Create, not going to kill the Kingdra as it switches in, because it has that heavy four times resistance, and uh, it's actually going to live with 11 HP, not bad. Not too shabby whatsoever, but not going to be able to live another hit. Uh, I I guess it, uh, I'm not sure if it was fast, oh, yeah, it's faster than me because I used V-Create, that's because I got the speed drop, so that's why he started sleeping first, but I had no chance to wake up because he switched in and he had to have one guaranteed turn, that was his guaranteed turn, and I kill him with a fusion bolt, so bada bing bada boom, uh, that's it, it's done, it's dead, so now it brings in the Dharma Anatan, I kind of want to stay in, see what he wants to go for, I don't want to risk anything, I do have Kingdra left, I do have uh, my good old Tornadus left, and the nice thing about both of those is that either one of them could potentially sweep, um, but I kind of think the best idea is to go into Tornadus, guarantee being faster and getting up Rain Dance, because I don't think uh, my Kingdra would outspeed the Dharma Manitan, um, and then, you know, I wouldn't want to take a hit from it, but uh, I get up the Rain Dance, he goes for Flare Blitz, which uh, even in the rain is going to be able to knock me out, because Dharma Manitan has some heavy hits on its side, Sheer Force, all that good stuff, and um, it kills me, but now that the rain is up, I can go into Miss Targaryen herself self, the Khaleesi, and uh, threaten all of the rest of his Pokemon, um, just Darmanitan and Rose Raid actually, because there's the only two left on his team. Um, so I kill Darmanitan easily with a Dragon Pulse, and then I'm going to fire some Draco Meteors from the sky, uh, which hopefully, I'm thinking at this point, should be able to kill the Rose Raid. It's taken lots of hazards, um, so... You know, it should go down pretty easily, and that will be the game. Fortunately, it lives on two, because... Mm, <sighs> In defensive. God, bulky Rose Raid is so bulky. It takes all these hits. You don't expect it to, and it's like, ah, oh, I actually have special defense. So, unfortunately, Danny's not going to be able to finish off the game, but I do, of course, have my uh, my Kong Mark II, my second Nido King, who I haven't really used that much as a physical sheer force Nido King. Um, doesn't really see too much light because special kind of uh, does a better job, but I don't know. I like physical sheer force Nido King. Getting off some poison jab with uh, the life orb and sheer force and stab and everything. And goes down, um, goes down, or fall, makes the Rose Raid go down. He's the one inflicting the going of the down. He's not the one himself going down, down in an earlier round. And sugar, we're going down. Swing. Um, enough of the reference. I've made lots of references today. I think we should, uh, should dwell on that. Think about maybe, maybe I, I can do uh, things like, say, words. And now my mind has drifted into another place, space, time, continuum. 
uh, time continuum. Hey, we started the video talking about talking about Doctor Who. Let's end the video talking about Doctor Who. I hope you guys in America will enjoy it. I've actually seen it, um, and it was pretty good. And yeah, look forward to Game of Thrones tomorrow as always. And uh, hey, if you enjoyed this video, you can always leave a like. That's much appreciated. It's one of those things that kind of helps me if you click the button. So if you want to do that, I would certainly uh, be in your debt, dear sir. And you know what they say about Lannisters. Always pay their debts. So, uh, without that, uh, without further ado, I'm done. I'm, I've said my piece, and, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.